Hi, I'm Laura McCabe, and I'm going to teach you how to make the crown jewel beaded bead. Okay, the crown jewel beaded bead. This one goes way back to my first book, Creating Crystal Jewelry with Swarovski, which I wrote in 2008. Um, and it has uh, this project in there, uh, along with a lot of other projects. But this is one that I've done as kits over the years, and I've incorporated the structure into bigger projects that I've done. Um, but it is one that people get uh, fetched up on the math a little bit. So I wanted to put together a little video for you that shows you the whole process where I talk a little bit about that math and how those connections work. And I show you just what needs to be done in order to ensure a perfectly symmetrical form when you make it. So, um, so I'm going to go through all the stages uh, in the video. And hopefully that will sort of help demystify the crown jewel. Okay, so we are going to be doing the crown jewels here. I have a couple different colorways for you to see here, and I'm actually going to be doing up a third colorway, and I have a little, let me grab this here, a little stone that's been bezeled. This is the colorway we're going to be doing today. Um, but before we get going, I want to go over the materials that you're going to need here. So you are going to need, let me grab this guy again so we can talk about a finished piece as well. You're going to need 16 millimeter stones. And I've used the crystal chatons here. You can also use uh, 16 millimeter Rivoli. It's just that 16 millimeter that's important. So um, if you are working with old stones, sometimes you'll find them in the SS size. So if you do, if you are working with old ones, uh, it would be a 65 SS. That's a 16 millimeter. So you'll need six of those. You will need some size 11 Japanese cylinder beads. So I've got those guys here. You're going to need three colors of the 15 round Japanese seed beads. So um, there's an A, a B, and a C. And if you look on the stone here, the C is kind of the closest to the stone in the bezel. And then the B is a little further away and the A even further away. So you want to kind of think about where you want them and what you want up against the stone when you choose your colors. You'll also need some size 15 check charlottes here. Uh, these are the tiny guys, um, but we will need those. And you're going to need some three millimeter crystal bicones. Those are in the corners. If you have a look here in the corners, that's where we'll be using those. So you're going to need some of those guys as well. Um, as far as tools, I will be uh, using size 13 needles. I do recommend that because we're going to be working with these little check charlottes. They are tiny. Um, I am going to also need some thread and I'll be using Fireline. That's kind of my preference. I use a six pound Fireline, but you can certainly use whatever you're comfortable with for this. Uh, you'll also need scissors, and then if you like using wax, you can use a wax as well. I, I generally tend to use wax when I when I work. So, um, without further ado, let's get going. Okay, we are going to start off here by bezeling the stones. So we have six of these guys to bezel. You can see here's one all finished up, but I want to go through that process first because um, we're going to need those before we can put them together. Um, I, I mentioned before that it does need to be 16 millimeter. You are kind of limited on the size that you use here because we're making uh, what is a polygon. It's a cube. Um, and you need basically, uh, without getting too complicated about it, you need a surround count that's divisible by four resulting in an even number. So for this, it's going to be 40 beads around. If you divide that by four, you get 10. So that's even. So we're good to go. So if you want to kind of adjust it for other sizes um, of stones, it, you are limited in that regard. So it does have to work out so that it is a, um, it is a number divisible by four resulting in an even number. Um, so just a heads up, you can actually use um, a size 12 because um, the surround on a size 12 millimeter meter is going to be 32 divided by 4 is 8. Um, and you do have to adjust the tab sizes on it, but um, you can kind of work with different sizes. But again, that math really applies when you're working. So um, so what we're going to do is uh, start off with, I usually use, I don't know, four feet. Um, I tend to work with a little extra thread than you need, but it's better to have more than not enough. So I have about four, four to five feet of thread on here. 
Um, it is my six pound fire line, but again, you can use what you're comfortable with. And I have strung up 40 beads because that's what we need to start. So our initial surround is going to be 40 beads. Uh, we are going to tie a knot here. It's going to be a square knot and leave yourself. I usually leave about 15 inches of tail thread. Uh, the reason being is we can use this later on when we are um, connecting the stones together. So I just want to tie a square knot here. So right over left, left over right. What I do, um, let me show you this, when I tie my knots, I tie kind of the first half and then rather than pulling everything down tight here, I will tie my second half and then pull everything down and that keeps the beads from sneaking into the knot. So um, this doesn't work as well with nylon threads um, because they are not as slippery as Fireline. But if you're working with Fireline, you can do that. You know, and I sort of, you can see I'm tightening up a little bit higher and then I can pull it down and I don't have trouble with that bead sneaking in. Um, so that is where we wanna start. Now, what I do is I generally will go through a couple of beads just so that I'm kind of coming out of a bead as opposed to coming off of a knot when I start my beading. And there we go. And I leave a little bit of thread showing, um, usually a bead to two beads with the thread showing. This is going to get sucked up as we work, but it um, helps you keep kind of a, a little bit of a looser tension. You don't want this super tight, super stiff, because it gets harder to set the stones when it is. So leave yourself a little bit of thread showing. And we're going to start peyote stitching. So we're going to use our cylinders. We're going to pick up a bead, going to skip a bead, and go through the next bead, just like that. So again, pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And you just kind of want to, you know, as you do each one, you want to tighten it down, make sure you're getting that, that peyote stitch formation where you have two beads side by side and then a single and then two. And I'm going to keep working all the way around. When I get to the end of the round, there is going to be a step up. So I'm going to come back when I get to that point and then we'll talk about uh, continuing on with our bezel. Okay, so at this point I am up to adding the last bead, last cylinder bead, so I've got it here. We're gonna skip a bead, go through a bead, and then we have uh, what's called a step up, which means we have to move to the next row. Um, generally, sort of people's inclination is to step up in this direction, or kind of to the outside, but actually when you're doing these bezels, the best thing to do is, so again, pick up a bead, skip this bead, go through this bead, is to step up to the inside, because we're gonna be sort of pulling this in to create a cup that our stone's going to go into. So we want to kind of keep building inward. So if you step up to the inside, that puts you right in the right spot there to do that. So we're going to pull that. There we go. And we are ready to do another round of peyote stitch. We are going to switch over to our 15s now because they're a bit smaller and they'll kind of help to pull things in a bit, create that cup that we need for our bezel. So I'm going to work with 15 A's this time. And now we're going to do a round of peyote Again, you're just, it gets easier. After you do that initial round of peyote, you're just adding beads in between the high beads. So at this point, it gets a little bit easier. There we go. And I'm just gonna work around. Again, kind of, you wanna, it sort of naturally is falling to the inside, but you wanna make sure that this, this row is sort of to the inside of those cylinders because we are, again, we're building it inward. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish this round of 15A, and then I'll come back and we'll uh, continue on. Okay, so I am on that last 15A, so we're going to pick that up, and again, we're going to have that step up, and we're going to step inward, so I'm going to pick up that bead, go through that cylinder, if I can get them in the right spot, there we go, and up through the 15, like that. So that finishes this row, and now we're going to do another row of 15s, and again, that's going to kind of continue to pull this inward a bit. And so at this time we're going to switch over to the 15B. So I'm just going to peyote stitch this round with my 15Bs. And again, I'm going to kind of pull in. You can see this still has a little bit of movement in it. You don't want it super stiff. Um, so you want to make sure you keep a little movement, but of course you don't want your peyote stitch to be loose. So I'm going to continue on with my 15Bs here. And when I get to the end of the round, I will come back. We have one more round on this side of the bezel. This is the back side of the bezel. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished up that round of the 15B, and now what we're gonna do is just one final round, and we're gonna use our 15 check Charlottes here. These guys are smaller than the um, Japanese 15s, so they're gonna kind of, again, help to draw things in a bit. So I'm just gonna do one round of peyote stitch with my 15 check Charlottes, 
and you can see how they just kind of, they're so nice. You get such a nice tidy finished look to that final row when you use those guys. And they kind of have a little bit of a vintage feel to them because they have that single facet. So I am gonna keep going here until I have this round all done. And then um, I'm gonna come back and we are gonna actually set our stone in place. Okay, so I have finished that round of Czech Charlottes there. That's all done. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip this over. This is going to be sort of the back side of the bezel. So we're going to be setting the stone like this in it, like that way. So um, what we need to do first is to get over to the other side of the cylinders. Um, and I just want to show you a little trick. This is uh, one of the nice things with video is I can show you things like this. Um, but if you have a look here, my thread is, I'm kind of working in a counterclockwise way. Um, I am a bit ambidextrous, so I tend to work in both directions. Um, but most people prefer going one way or the other. Um, and I would say most commonly uh, right-handed people tend to go counterclockwise and and left-handed people go clockwise. Um, so in this case, I am working in a counterclockwise direction, but if I cut through diagonally, just like straight through on the diagonal, I'll find that when I get to the other side, I'm going the opposite direction, I'm going clockwise. So you might wanna keep it in the same direction that you're sort of comfortably moving in. And in order to do that, all you have to do is just kind of a little turn around here. So if my thread is coming this way, it's coming towards me, what I'm gonna do is coming out of that little 15B there. I'm just going to change direction and go through the cylinder bead right next to it and then diagonally up like that. And that'll bring me to the top row of the cylinder. So I'm ready to put my stone in. Um, but that's just a good little trick um, because generally speaking, people tend to prefer uh, working either in one direction or the other. So, so there's the back of our bezel. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this little guy in and you're going to have to kind of hold him in place to start. Um, I usually kind of support it with my two fingers here. And then I use my thumb to kind of hold it in place um, because until you get, you know, two, two to three rows on the front, it's not going to really hold it. So we're gonna um, peyote stitch on this side as well. We're gonna start with our 15 A's. And as you add each one of these, get that tail out of the way. As you add each one of these, you wanna kind of pull up because you want this to come up and over. And this is what's gonna capture the stone. We're not gonna use anything but beads to hold this stone in place. Um, so we need to make sure they come up and over the edge and hold it nice and tightly. So I'm gonna continue uh, stitching with my 15 A's. When I finish this round, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about um, the next row. Okay, so that is that round of 15A. Um, that's all in place. And I have stepped up. Your row's again gonna have that step up at the end of each round. And it's sort of, it's nicely holding this. It's starting to hold it in place, but we are still gonna need to do some more rows just to secure it. So the next round is gonna be the 15Bs. And again, it's just your regular peyote stitch. Got a little knot going in there. And we want to do, um, yeah, just one round with these 15 Bs. I'm going to continue on. And um, what I'll do is when I'm done with this, I will come back and I will show you the next round. Okay, so I have finished off that round of 15 Bs. Um, and I am going to do one more row here too uh, with the 15s. I'm going to do 15 Cs. Uh, depending on what shape your stone is, if you're using a Rivoli, you might be okay with just the two rows of 15s. But, you know, again, you can just kind of uh, play that by ear and, and make a judgment call on that. But uh, for the chatons, they're quite deep. So I find usually you're going to need the three rows of the 15 Japanese beads here. So we're going to do 15C on this round. And again, it's peyote stitch, just like we've been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead, I will do this row, and then I will be back. And after this, we just got one final row, which we're gonna be doing with those Chuck Charlottes. Okay, there is our row of 15C finished, and as promised, a final row here of our Czech Charlottes. So we're just gonna add these guys in. Again, they're a little bit smaller than the Japanese 15s, so they will kind of finish it off and pull it in just a little bit more. So it's nice to have these little guys. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish this round, and then I just wanna come back and I wanna show you, um, I like to uh, sort of tie it off when I've, when I've finished the row. Um, I will be leaving threads attached because we'll be using them when connecting. But if you tie a little knot, it kind of helps to um, secure everything and keep it from loosening up. So when I get done with this round, I will be right back just to show that, that little uh, knot to you. Okay, at this point, I have finished that round of Czech Charlottes. And like I mentioned, I like to do a little half hitch. So the way to do that is you want to take your needle and pass under 
the thread here. This is kind of the thread in that top row. You can see I've passed under there. Now I want to pull it down until I have a little loop. So I have a tiny little loop and I just want to go right through that loop and then I want to pull everything down tight. And you just want to make sure when you're pulling this down that your knot falls between beads and it doesn't catch over any of the beads. Um, but if you do that, that'll hold everything tight. You don't have to worry about that last row loosening up when you um, set this aside. So we have a few more of these to do. There's going to be six all together. So I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of them. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you that um, what's sort of that tricky part, which is linking them all together to create the uh, cube. Okay, at this point we have all of our stones done um, and uh, the stones will have two threads attached. You're going to have the working thread that you half hitched when you finish your final row there and then there's also the tail thread from you know when you began we left that 15 inch tail. So um, those are uh, those are our bits and pieces here. What I'm going to have you do is we're just going to weave off both threads on two of them because these are going to be the top and bottom. If you think of a cube it's basically a box so it's got six sides and we're going to link the four sides together and then what we're going to do is build little tabs and attach the top and the bottom at the end and we actually are going to be using thread on these sort of side you know stones to attach the top and bottom so the top and bottom aren't going to need any threads attached so we may as well get rid of those now um, if you have a look here this guy i took them off already but i'm going to do it on here we're just going to half hitch a couple couple times you can do a couple more um, on this one and then a couple times with your tail and then just cut the thread so um, that's all we need to do to get rid of the uh, tails there so let me go ahead and do that on uh, this one as well and then we'll get going on uh, creating our tabs Okay, so now we are ready for um, what I think people find to be the tricky part. Um, so I have one of those four stones that we left our threads on. And what we're going to be doing, uh, again, is we're going to be connecting the four sides of the cube. So uh, we need to get our spacing correct. That's really the key, key bit on this, is getting the spacing correct. So when we attach the first stone to the second stone, it doesn't really matter because this is the first tab, so we don't have to worry about the spacing between tabs because it's tab number one. So let me just show you that one first, um, what we're going to do is you want to make sure you're in that middle row of cylinder beads. And if you have a look there, I can point it out with my little pointer, that is the middle of the three rows of cylinder beads. You need to make sure your thread's in the right place for this all to kind of work out. So make sure you're there to start. And we'll try not to grab our other one here. And coming out of there, we are going to use our cylinder beads to build a little tab. And this tab is going to be six beads wide. So it's going to be three added in one direction and then three added the other way back. So what I'm going to do is picking up, here's my cylinder, I'm going to go through the next bead in that row. So it's basically peyote stitch. Sometimes they call it stitch in the ditch. Um, but we're just going to add one, two, and three. So that's one direction. And then we're going to add three more. It's even count peyote stitch. So it's just your normal kind of peyote turnaround. You pick up a bead, go through that high bead there, and then pick up another, go through the next, and then one more. And that's all we need for our little tab to connect it into the next stone. So there we go. Okay, so that's all connected there. Um, ready to go, or all finished, ready to connect. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to zip it. So it's going to zip right into the middle row of the next stone. So again, you got to make sure you're looking at the middle row. That's that one right here. Um, if you're not in the right row, that's going to mess up all your math on this. So you want to make sure it's correct. So if I hold these two kind of together, coming out the end here, I'm going to change direction and go through a bead in that middle row there. So I'm just going to zip back and forth. I'm going to go through the high bead here and then through the next bead on the middle row over here. So I'm leaving it a bit loose so you can see the zip, but as you do it, you can pull it tight if you want, you know, and then like that, it'll, it'll hold together nicely. So um, again, through here and then over to the middle row over here. And back here, 
And now if you look, I've kind of gone through all the beads there, but see how it's not fully connected? You just want to go back over to this side here and go to the next bead in the row. And that will fully connect everything so you don't have that little gap there. So there we go, all zipped together. Now what we're going to do is if I grab my little guy over here, you can see uh, to put the bicones in, I put little charlottes in the corners here. And those are kind of at the end uh, ends of the tab. So the, there's a pico at the end of each tab. So I um, I usually put that in at this point. I may as well. Um, so here's my thread. Now I need to do the pico uh, right here between this bead here in the tab and this bead here, it's sort of a high bead in that middle row over here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of change directions. You just gotta wiggle around. There's no um, you know, necessarily correct way to go as long as you get there and your thread isn't showing. That's the important part. So we're gonna come over here and now I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna go up this way. And I'm gonna add my three check Charlottes. One, two, three. Go through there and then zip my way across and you want to make sure you have a little pico at both sides um, because we're going to need them at both ends go and one two three on our little check charlottes and we're going to go down through this. The um the picos because you're dealing with an even count tab, they're a little bit offset. If you have a look, they're not directly across from each other, but they're just slightly kitty corner to each other. So, but that is correct. That's how they'll be. So, um so don't don't worry about that. And we are just going to kind of leave that now. Um what you can do is if you want, you can actually change direction and just go through the bead next to the one that you're coming out of and that will lock everything. You don't have to worry about it loosening up. Got a little fire engine in the background. Okay, here's number one and two connected to each other. We have our little tab there. Now we're ready to connect the third stone to the second stone. And this is gonna be where the spacing becomes important. So we need to make sure we have our count correct. We wanna have these tabs directly across from each other. If they are not directly across from each other, uh, the, the cube will end up kind of wonky. So it's important to understand the spacing here. I'm just gonna do the math quickly. I'll talk about it. And then if you're not into math, you don't have to listen. But if you are into math, you might find this interesting. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to be building four, ultimately there's going to be four connector tabs on here, right? So one, two, three, four to connect all of the sides to, you know, this side to connect these together. So um, what I need to do is I need to keep in mind that these tabs are going to be six beads wide each. So if you add those together, that's four times six, that's 24 beads that are already accounted for. So that's going to leave us with a number of our uh, account of 16 remaining beads. So we have 24 that are kind of used up in the tabs. So that leaves 16 of those initial 40 in the count left. If you divide that by four, because we got four corners, that's going to be a spacing of four on the corners. So 16 divided by four, we get the four spacing and then the six bead wide tab. So, um, and again, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry too much because I got the numbers for you as far as counting. So you don't have to worry about the math, but that's for all you math people out there. So um, as far as the counting, we need to leave enough space for a corner, which we said was four, a tab, which is six, and then another corner before our next tab here. So it's gonna be four plus six plus four, that's 14. And when we go in here to count, what we wanna do is we're gonna count along that middle row because that's where we're zipping into. And the way I think of it is I think of it as ditches and beads. So um, one is a ditch, two is a bead going along here. So if you have a look, there's the last bead there on the edge of the tab. So number one for me here is a ditch. So I'm gonna do one, two is a bead, three is a ditch, four is a bead, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And my thread's actually in the right spot here to start building the tab. Now, what you'll find is sometimes, um, you know, if you're, if you're not, if 14 is not a bead, that's going to mess you up a little bit. It's going to set your, your, tab off. It's not going to be directly opposite. So you need to make sure 14 there is a bead. And what happens is if, if number one 
is rather than being a ditch like it was here as a bead, you're going to end up coming out of, you know, 14 will be a ditch. So it's going to mess you up. So if you find that that's the case, all that you have to do to fix that is you have to go bypass where the tab's going to be and come in from the other direction. So it's an easy fix. It just means you're coming from the wrong direction. So if I counted this and I found, oh, you know, number, number 14 is a ditch. I'm like, okay, that's not right. What I'll do is I'll zigzag my way over here and then change direction. And I'll count from this tab here, this side of the tab around and I'll count 14 and I'll be in the right spot. So um, you do want to take the time to do that. I think that really is the tricky part for people when they're doing this is, is getting that spacing correct. So we're in the right spot here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to build this tab just the way I built the first tab and um, zip this stone to the third one. And then I'll add the picos in. So once that's done, I'll come back and I'll show you where we're at. Okay, so there we have one connected to two connected to three. We're ready to attach our fourth one in here. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before where we need to make sure our spacing is correct. So we wanna count over the 14 along the middle row, making sure number 14 is actually a bead that we're coming out of. Um, if it's not, we'll change direction, come back from the other way. And then what I'm gonna do is build the tab just the same way as we did here, attach it and add our picos. So that will attach number three to number four. And then we're gonna do that one more time to attach the fourth one to the first one. And again, you just wanna make sure that that count is correct along the bottom there so that your tabs are evenly spaced. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about putting the top and bottom on the box. Okay, at this point I have all four sides connected. So you can see there's the four sides of the box and we're ready to put the top and the bottom on. Uh, but before we do that, we have to build the tab. So there's gonna be a tab on each of these on this side and then again, a tab on this side. Uh, so again, this is where spacing becomes important. So I just wanted to show you that as well. Um, here we go, I got a thread here. You can see there's a lot of threads attached. You have eight threads right now, which is a little bit um, uh, cumbersome, but you will actually be using all eight of them when you uh, put the bicones in. So I would recommend kind of keeping them on there for the time being if you can stand them. Um, and what we're going to do is we want to make sure, again, our spacing needs to be correct here. So if you remember from tab to tab here is 14, right? And so then we need a six bead wide tab. So if we subtract that six from the 14, we get eight. So again, you're going to need four a spacing of four between this tab and this tab. So we just wanna make sure our spacing is correct. So if I tip it up on its side, um, you can see here, uh, the number one here is a ditch, a bead, a ditch, a bead. So that works out, I'm coming out of a bead, I'm ready to build my little tab here. So um, that one is pretty straightforward uh, cause I'm coming from the, the correct direction. If you have a look over here, let's find another one over here on this side. So that was the, the one side here, this side, when I go to count, I just want to show you how this whole turnaround business works um, because it does come up when you're doing this. If you have a look here, next to my tab on this side is a bead. So it starts bead, a ditch, a bead, a ditch. And remember we said you don't want that last one to be a ditch because then it kind of shifts it one way or the other. So because of that, we're going to have to just kind of bypass like zoo, zoo, zoo through here and then turn around and we're going to come back from the other direction. And if you look counting from this side, I'll be all right because the first one here along the middle is going to be a ditch, a bead, a ditch, a bead. So that'll put us in the right place to build the tab over here. So you just have to be aware of that, you know, count every time. Um, again, this is the tricky part for people with these is getting the, the spacing correct. So you just wanna make sure you take the time and you do have that spacing of four between the tabs on the side and the tabs on the top here. So I'm gonna go ahead, it's gonna take me a little while here because I got eight tabs to put in place, but I'm gonna do all eight of them. Um, so it's gonna be four up here and four over here. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about putting the sort of the top and bottom on the cube. Okay, so I have the tabs built on the top there. And also if I flip it around, I have them built on the bottom. Um, so once I have all of those built, we are ready to attach the top and bottom stones. So um, again, I apologize for all the thread, but it is gonna be useful uh, when we go to attach these. Um, and what we're gonna do is take one of these guys that we, you know, we wove the threads off of, so at least we don't have threads on there. And we are gonna zip into, again, always zipping into the middle row. So the first one, I don't really have to worry about counting my spacing. I'm just going to pick wherever and I'm going to zip it in. So again, into the middle row. 
you really want to make sure you're always zipping into the middle row. It's easy to, um, to zip into the wrong row. And then again, the math won't work out and it will come out a little bit wonky. So uh, take the time just to make sure that's the middle. And just like we did when we attached the sides, we're going to go back and forth. And again, we also want to make sure we have our little uh, Charlotte Picos on the end because we're going to be using those to put the bicones in. So that's kind of the last thing is putting those bicones in. I like to kind of just make sure all the tabs are complete and everything's attached before we go ahead and do that. But here I go, turning around and coming back this way. Going to do our little Picos. One, two, three. And gonna work your way across. I find a lot of times, you see how right now I'm down in the bezel? I find it's kind of tight. So usually I try to keep my zipping across. I'm gonna come back here, um, kind of along the center of the tab. I find it's a lot easier to do it that way. So kind of keep to these beads that are on the center there. There we go. And work my way over to this side. And again, I want my little pico on this side. And then we'll leave our thread attached because we'll use that to put the bicones. So I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna do this. I wanna attach every tab. Um, again, you know, spacing, uh, important. Don't forget to count. Um, we are gonna need, again, we're gonna need four in between. So ditch, high bead, ditch, high bead. And then we're gonna zip that right in there and it will work out you know you'll be able to zip in correctly because we've placed all these tabs correctly so you don't have to worry about that whole changing direction or anything everything's right it will just click right in so um, i'm going to go ahead i'm going to attach this guy up here and this guy down here i'm going to leave all my tails on there because i want those uh, for the bicones but let's do that and then i will come back and we'll uh, finish up with the bicones Okay, at this point I have all of my tabs connected. So we have the nice little cube formation. And the final thing to do is gonna be to add our bicones. If you have a look here, I've put bicones in the corners. Um, you do need to make a decision as to whether you want bicones in every corner or like I've done here, I've actually left two corners open, two opposite corners. Um, and that way I can string this up and, and put it on a necklace and sort of uh, wear it. But if I'm doing a sculpture, I'll often just fill in every corner. So um, you just want to kind of make that decision. And then let me show you how these bicones go in. So here's my little Pico. I need to position my thread so that it's coming out of the middle bead of that Pico that's at the end of one of the tabs there like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a couple of bicones. There's a couple three millimeter bicones. And I'm going to go through the middle bead of the next Pico over here. So you can see I'm going through there. Gonna pull them in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through that second bicone that I strung up. Tighten that up. You don't want to pull too hard on this because they, they are crystal bicones, so they can be a bit sharp. So don't, don't pull too tight. And we're going to pick up our third three millimeter bicone. And then we're going to go through the middle bead on this Pico over here. So see if we can get through that. There we go. And we're going to pull that guy into place. And now we're going to go back through that one we've just added. And we're going to go back through that first one as well. And then back into that Pico that we were coming out of. Again, there we go. And that fills in the corner. Now, if you want, and you can get through the Charlottes again, you can certainly reinforce this thread path a second time. Although it's not really necessary, but if it makes you feel better, you can do that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is weave off this thread. I generally find the easiest way to do that is kind of to weave your way up to the top row of one of these bezels and just half hitch a couple times along the, the top row before you cut the thread. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think I'm going to leave two of my corners open so that this is a bead. So basically what I'll do is 
is I'll fill in three of the four corners on the top side here. And then when I go to the bottom, I just want to make sure I, I keep in mind what the, the corner is that's directly opposite from the empty one up here. So even if you need to, you know, stick a, a piece of thread or something through there to uh, remind yourself, you know, but you want them to be kind of like that across from each other. So you just want to make sure you kind of pay attention because it's easy to just get carried away and fill them all in. So let me go ahead and fill in these corners and I'm gonna weave off my threads and I'll come back just to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so there it is, the crown jewel uh, all finished up. I did leave those opposite corners. You can see those opposite corners are open. So if I wanna string it up and have it like a um, like a bead on a necklace, I can do that. Although it is lovely as a sculpture or an ornament. And in that case, you might wanna fill in all of the corners with the bicones. So here's our other little guys. We'll pull those in, a nice little collection of three crown jewels. Thanks for joining me today for the crown jewel beaded bead. Be well, stay safe and beat on.